can you explain why science is so important for the future of chronic UTI testing and treatment and why we should be wary of pseudoscience and different treatments and tests available that have no scientific foundation? I, for the first 20 years of my time at UCL, I, I, I was working on urodynamics. I did an enormous amount of urodynamics and I explored the biomechanics and the mathematics of it. And um, I, I developed a, an equation that described the, the urodynamic filling study and thereby described the, the nature of the overactive bladder. And we, 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 I used Derek Griffiths's equations to explore voiding and so on. Now, what happened was that the, 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 the equations for the overactive bladder, uh, when we applied them to the human circumstance, they failed to predict response. Um, they failed to predict all sorts of things. They just failed. And um, from that, I realized that the urodynamic understanding of lower urinary tract infections had to be faulted. Now, it was science that took us there. And then there was a, a, a long period where I, I just didn't say, well, if urodynamics is not explaining this, we, we're going to have to come up with some other kind of pathophysiological approach to it. And that's a very difficult thing to do because urodynamics, even today, is still all the rage, despite the experiments that have, have suggested that it shouldn't be. And it was only by applying, you know, traditional science to this that we tumbled on the fact that the MSU culture was missing things and the CS, the, the dipsticks were missing things. And it was only by the application of science, rigid empirical science, that we started to develop these empirical systems that, that allowed us to find out treatment regimes that worked. Now, the problem is that that is incredibly laborious it's full of disappointment and failure and it's a long time before you start getting the results that you're interested in and there, there, there are too many people out there who, who who are what i would say are wannabes they you know they they want to be sort of have their eureka moments and they want to sort of uh, uh, come up with a solution as quickly as possible mm -hmm. and also there are groups out there that want to make money and I tell you, the quack industry uh, considers you, you patient group just to be gullible patsies. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the cynical attitude that they manifest behind the speaker's chair, as it were, when you talk to them in the wings, is, is horrifying. But the difficulty is that with the explosion in social media, you get people forming camps and... Uh, arguing and abusing each other and never really using any coherent scientific justification. So you've got the molecular tests that are being used. Well, none of those doing these DNA tests of the urine have, have addressed causation and none of those laboratories will explain to me what I'm meant to do with the data that they provide. Why? Because the science hasn't been done. But God, they're costing the patients a fortune and they're causing the patients to be put on all sorts of outrageous treatments. And, and there doesn't seem to be any way of, of curtailing it. Similarly, fulguration. I was absolutely horrified to see fulguration suddenly take off with all these uh, strident camps promoting it. And when the science is just not there. Could you explain what a fulguration is? Well, fulguration is, it's, it's been produced by, there are, there's a Turkish consultant in um, who's doing it. I mean, people going to Turkey. What he does is uses, a fulguration is just a, 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 a hot wire loop that can be, it heats up so you can use it as a knife. Is that right, Anita? Yes, that's right. Yeah. And what he's doing is cutting strips out of the trigon. And the reason he's doing that is because the trigon is often uh, a site for, for, for the metaplasia. And metaplasia is the, the ubiquitous response of the urethelium or any ure epithelium for that matter to stress. And he's doing it. And he just decided to do it one day 
and is doing it for chronic urine infection. And the the the, the data that have been collected is 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 dismal. Uh, there's no proper discipline study going on. It's so people just go off and have the fulguration done. If you cut, the thing is that there's a network of a um, very important network of C fibers, pain fibers, underneath the urethelium of the trigon is about 0.7 centimeters down from the surface. And if you cut into that, you're likely to have some kind of effect on pain, particularly if you're using burning to do it. But so you may get an immediate aftermath effect. But the trouble is you then got C pain fibers regrowing into an area of chronic infection where at the moment there's an enormous amount of science going on into the awful problem of C fiber neuropathy causing chronic pain syndromes. So there's an example of where you, you need to do the science incredibly meticulously. And I think that you, you're, you're seeing now, uh, helped by social media, this business of it, it, they're treating the science as though they were football fans. I mean, they're supporting one group or, or another. If you don't do, the, the history of our world shows if you don't do the science properly, you don't get the answer. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's great that you're basing everything so meticulously on scientific research. Thank you. I, I think that the other thing is that, that I emphasise disappointment and error. So there's nothing we put out that hasn't been repeated in triplicate minimum. All right. Minimum. Yeah. We're constantly re redoing the experiments because I'm quite convinced that we're going to make a howler sooner yeah. or later and we need to have systems for picking it up. Yeah.